Ah, so legal stuff. Let's talk about legal stuff. In the United States, you have something called the Constitution. The Constitution restricts the government. The Constitution's job is to restrict the government and to protect your rights. You have something called the Bill of Rights, which were amendments to the Constitution to really, really super give you a good deal and restrict the government could do because governments have such a history of screwing people over, over and over and over and over again throughout history. So what are some things in the Constitution? And these are very important things to know. And these things are so important to know that federal officers, such as Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, you go on the internet and you can search Gary Gensler's confirmation hearing, and you're going to see him swear an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America to defend it against enemies, both foreign and domestic. Now, you might ask yourself, what is a domestic enemy? What is a domestic enemy of the Constitution? Hmm, I wonder. So the Constitution has something called the First Amendment. The First Amendment is freedom of speech, freedom of the press. Government shall make no law against free talking and all that stuff, right? Well, it turns out that Gary Gensler and the Securities Exchange Commission is actually doing a lot in violation of their oath. It turns out that they're violating a lot of what the Constitution is supposed to be protected from. So the Constitution says you have a right to freedom of movement, a right to freedom of association, a right to freedom of speech. There's other legal doctrines like the right to contract, um, which, you know, if you interfere with other people's contracts, it's torturous interference and you can get sued for it. It can cost you money. You have a uh, whole bunch of rights in there, right? And then there's things that are like even harsher violations. So if you're going to violate people's free speech, one of the worst ways to do that is with something called prior restraint, where you don't even give them the chance to speak. Well, listen to this. Blockchain networks are communication networks. They carry speech. The first Bitcoin block carried a copy of a newspaper article. Um, blockchain networks are speech. And the software that consists of blockchain networks, the nodes, the wallets, those are just word processing assistants. They just help you format your speech in a way that other participants can understand. So when you try and interfere with the blockchain, you're interfering with communication. You're interfering with communications network. You are performing prior restraint. Your interference in these things is creating a chilling effect. You are interfering with people's association. You are interfering with people's right to contract with each other. You are interfering with specific contracts. You are doing numerous, multiple things in violation of your oath to protect the Constitution. You're doing it outside of congressional authority. You're doing it outside of your mandate. Like, so I don't understand how America became the carceral state. America has the highest rate of incarceration of any nation that's ever existed in the history of mankind. And yet you see very few lawsuits against people in the government it just doesn't seem to match up to me. If you if you have extremely high rates of the government putting people in prison, shouldn't you have also high rates of some of the people being put in prison kind of suing the government for violating their rights? I mean, you go around the world and you, you can't even in some countries get 20 years for murder, but in the United States, they hand out can't, like, time like it's candy. You, you can get 20 years very easily for doing lots of Lots of different things. Very easy to get 20 years in the United States. Um, very hard to get 20 years anywhere else. Isn't that cruel and unusual? By the way, Bill of Rights has a rule against cruel and unusual punishment. Shouldn't there be more lawsuits over this? Isn't it cruel and unusual that for things that aren't murder, you're getting what the entire rest of the world considers to be murder punishments? And, and I, think, I think even in the United States, you see crimes that just you're going to get punished harder than... You're going to get punished harder for nonviolent crimes and violent crimes in a lot of instances. Doesn't make any sense. Or like meta crime that doesn't even have a victim. I never, these things are like, they're not, they're not healthy. They're not good. And it's how you end up with the highest rate of incarceration in the history of mankind. So do you really have the rights you're not willing to fight for? Probably not. So you got to fight for these rights. And it's just tragic because so few people have the funding or the ability to stand up to the blowback to fight for your rights. I mean, when 
the ex-president of the United States is having lawfare used against him so that he can't run for office? That's what they do in the third world. The, the people in power use the executive branch and the, and the police to make it so that they, no one can run against them, so they just keep winning. That's not good for democracy, guys. It's really not. <laughs> like, I just, you're supposed to have free and fair elections where people are allowed to choose between different parties, and you're not supposed to, once again, uh, this is just like prior restraint. You're not supposed to, before they can run, make sure they can't run, because how, do you, how can you have a fair election when you, the people that you want to unelect are in control of who gets to run against them? It doesn't make sense. And then, you know, if you give the government this power that they shouldn't have, at some point you'll get a bad team in charge and that bad team will abuse that power. And so traditionally, the, like the founding fathers figured it out, that there should be checks and balances. You shouldn't just rely on one person being good for everything to work out. You should assume that occasionally someone's going to suck, some bad guy's going to get power, and you should have a checks and balance. So, you know, the legislative branch is supposed to write the law executive branch is supposed to execute it. The judicial branch is supposed to, you know, be in the middle, making sure that everything works right between the two. Right now, the administrative state, a fourth branch of government that's not supposed to exist of unelected bureaucrats is writing all the laws, encumbering millions of people with regulations, and there's no counterplay. Your counterplay is to sue them in court and get them declared arbitrary and capricious. So, how many times recently has the SEC been declared arbitrary and capricious? Numerous times. Numerous. So in the Ripple case, uh, the judge basically said that the SEC lawyers were not uh, performing with a faithful allegiance to the law and was changing their story based on, you know, getting whatever they wanted. The SEC just recently, their, S their lawyers were lying in a case. And the judge uh, caught them in the lies and said, well, now that you've been caught in these lies, explain to me why I shouldn't sanction you and fine you directly, fine the SEC lawyer that was lying to the court. And then you see all of his bosses at the SEC jump in there like, oh, we're sorry, Your Honor. Uh, please don't fine us, bro. Don't sanction us, bro. We're going to retrain everybody. And so I'll, you know, I will uh, let you guys know where to find these specific documents. This, this is only a couple of days old. Yes. <laughs> so that, then you see this guy's bosses at the SEC throwing him under the bus and throwing junior guys under the bus, if I remember correctly, uh, you know, and then uh, talking about how they're going to retrain all their litigators and how they're getting rid of that guy and they're putting in new guys. <laughs> and you're like, hey, you know what? You wouldn't have all these problems. You just didn't lie to the judge. So you don't, you don't need to train your guys on how to not lie to the judge. <laughs> And this isn't, this isn't the only thing, right? The SEC has lost four of their last five cases in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, Gary Gensler likes to go on television speaking outside of his capacity of the SEC. So he'll go, in, he'll go in interviews with people and say that he's not speaking on behalf of the SEC. Well, buddy, that means you're speaking on behalf of yourself, which means it's actionable. Okay, you are speaking on behalf of yourself and you are moving markets and you are manipulating markets. You, Gary Gensler, are manipulating markets outside of your authority at the SEC, which means you are personally responsible. You hear me hedging the heck out of my language because I don't want to catch a case. Not financial advice, do your own research, no forward-looking statements. But you, buddy, you're on record teaching at MIT saying that 75% of tokens are not securities. And then you get a job, you, you got your round trip, you got your revolving door, you got your 16 years at Goldman Sachs, but now you get to regulate Goldman Sachs. <laughs> ah, that's a good round trip you got there, buddy. You get to defend all your friends that you make all your money with. Hey, where's all your money, Gary? It's with all your friends that you're helping out by screwing the competitors, right? So in Gary's world, and, and by the way, so I would love to see Gary Kensler catch a charge for his manipulating markets with his speech outside of his capacity at the SEC. I would love to see him catch a charge for violating his oath. I'd love to see people suing him directly because he is, people don't understand when the SEC attempts to call something a security, it's like calling hugging, punching and arresting parents for beating up their kids. It is disgusting. It is a violation of due process. It is a violation of equal protection. People that speak to each other using the blockchain deserve the same rights 
as people that speak to each other using pens and paper, non-digitally, analog. If they should have the same protection of the people that use the mail. They should have the same protection of the people that use the telephone. So there's just there's so many things going wrong right now. Like, and it's just gonna cost millions and millions of dollars to fix it. And I think you could reduce the amount of millions spent if there was some personal responsibility. I think if people were held personally responsible for what they're doing, right? So if you're if you're a, a guard in a jail and you violate someone's rights, you can be sued around your qualified immunity. If you decide to go outside of your authority and outside of your qualified immunity protection to make statements that damage markets, maybe you should be held personally responsible for that. Maybe you should answer to the court for that. If you say things like, you know, we want to lose more cases because if you're not bringing enough cases, if you're not losing cases, you're not bringing enough, Gary Gensler's on the record saying that. Gary Gensler's on the record in Congress under oath saying that they there's a gap in the legislation where they can't reg, uh, uh, regulate uh, secu- exchanges because they're crypto exchanges, not uh, securities exchanges. And then, you know, not so long later, he goes, ah, was I lying then or was I lying now? I don't know, but my short, my story sure has changed. Now we actually have everything we need. Just come in and register, even though there's literally, they've been sued by Coinbase via writ of mandamus. Uh, and then the SEC finally responded after delaying and delaying and said, oh yeah, actually we're not gonna make any rules. The whole rest of the world's making rules. Japan's making rules, Singapore's making rules. There's new exchange licenses, you know, XRP just got licensed as a money transmitter, VASP value service, whatever the heck, I don't remember, virtual asset service provider in Ireland. Coinbase just got virtual asset service provider in uh, France, I think. The whole rest of the world's figured it out, you know. (laughs) And then more bad stuff, right? Gary Gensler loses the XRP case. Now, look, it isn't him specifically, no, but I think he's on the commission of guys that has to vote for what actually gets sued, right? So I think there's like five people on the commission and you need like three of five. And if you get three of five, then they can like bring an action against somebody. I think that's how it works. Not an expert, not a lawyer. So like three of five guys, and by the way, you see dissenting opinions all the time, right? So Hester Pierce is a commissioner. She's always dissenting. She's dissented in the Stoner Cats case. She's dissented in a bunch of cases. She's going to tell you what we're doing is wrong. Like th- this stuff that the SEC is doing is wrong. And she's on the board. She's in the commission, right? She's one of the five people that gets to vote on these things. And there's another guy, I think his name's Udaya, that like is commonly dissenting with her these days. Now, like, why am I telling you guys about this stuff? Because this is your, these are your rights. I don't live in the United States. I haven't lived in the United States for decades. These are your rights. These are your problems. These people are screwing you. You need to do something about it. So... The, the things that I'm telling you that are obviously true, like, for instance, you can't custody cryptocurrency. Like, I, I'll give you an example. The IRS is trying to make some law where, like, anybody that could have known about a transaction now has compelled speech and has to, like, gather data on other people, which will be hacked and stolen by Chinese hackers and Russian hackers. But they're just idiots, right? It, it's just like the SEC themselves. They, in their own annual letter, declare that they can't find experts to work on crypto because they all own crypto and don't want to sell it. And so then they're not allowed to hire people that own crypto. Okay. Well, um, maybe you guys have a bad setup or like stop sucking, right? Just stop sucking guys. If if you don't have the expertise to regulate a thing, you know, it's better to do no harm first, right? Like the Hippocrates law that doctors follow do no harm first. Yeah, like Gary Gensler was making meetings with uh, Sam Bankman-Fried, his buddy, right? His Democrat, like Gary Gensler was the treasurer for Hillary Clinton's Democratic campaign for president. He's as political as you can get, I think. Here he is meeting with, uh, you know, Sam Bankman-Fried, who sent tons of money to uh, Democratic, uh, what, politicians. You got... Was it Maxine Waters blowing Sam Bankman free to kiss? Yeah, guys, good one. But you're not going to give the creditors back that money they donated, are you? FTX went bankrupt. Sam Bankman free stole the money. But you politicians aren't going to give back that money that uh, he gave to you that he stole, are you? No, you're not. Why? Uh, you might not be good people. <laughs> you just might not be good people. Um, now, not to say that not giving, like, 
there's some law that covers them so they don't have to give it back or whatever, but that's not what makes you bad. You violating people's rights is what makes you bad, right? I remember COVID. I remember you guys violating everyone's right to move, uh, violating their freedom of movement. I remember you house arresting people. I remember you guys doing that. It was disgusting. I remember you guys now, uh, you know, trying to claim that crypto is used to support Hamas and saying like 60 million, and then you go check the numbers and it's like 800K. You, what's going on here, guys? Why do you keep lying? Stop lying. Literally just stop lying. Um, yeah, so the arguments that I have that are obviously true, that cryptocurrencies are communications networks that might have Rule 210 protections for safe harbor, that might have uh, protections for freedom of speech, freedom of contract, freedom of association, protection against prior restraint. These arguments aren't getting used. They're just not, which is so stupid to me. These are communications networks among peers. It couldn't be any more obvious. This is speech. We are transmitting text. We are transmitting messages. We are transmitting numbers. We are transmitting pictures. We are transmitting art. We are transmitting audio. This is a communications network amongst peers. This is speech. This is speech as speech gets. Right? So the idea that the people just aren't using these arguments is very stupid. Because if you lose a case, you can't bring up new evidence in the appeal. So you have to cover everything in your first case. So if you're leaving arguments on the table and not making them in the first case, you're not going to be able to bring them up on appeal. Huge mistake, huge error. So if you guys out there that are lawyers that are submitting amicus briefs or filing motions to intervene, you need to be covering your First Amendment, Tenth Amendment, due process, equal protection, latches, waiver, Google these words if you don't know what they mean. Um, like latches and waiver basically cover you could have brought this action earlier and the defendant would have had a better job, a better ability to defend themselves, but you chose not to. And therefore you might've waived your right to enforce. And then in other cases, I mean, we've seen crypto cases where it was even over the, uh, over the statute of limitations and then they just ate a, a judgment anyway, or like the, the statute of limitations was up. Like what, hey, why did, why didn't you get good counsel? And why didn't you argue that the statute was up? Like what, Oh, crypto, crypto. It's a, it's an industry run by clowns and idiots, clowns and idiots that won't listen. If you guys would listen to me, you wouldn't have lost money in BlockFi. You wouldn't have lost money in Celsius. You wouldn't have lost money in Gemini Earn. What a, what a fake Bitcoin maximalist, right? Look at the Winklevite twins. Yeah, you guys are real Bitcoin maximalists when you're doing the opposite and taking people's private keys from them and giving it to a counterparty and then all of you getting wrecked together. Are you, how stupid are you guys? You guys are idiots. Or, or how about this one, right? Censorship resistant network. People are putting JPEGs on the Bitcoin network and the Bitcoin people hate this. They, they killed it with counterparty and made the op return code size too small for county to party to operate way back when. Even Tether used to operate only on the Bitcoin network. So USDT used to operate on Keller coins which was on the Bitcoin network. And then they stopped doing it because the fees sucked and the features sucked. And so they moved over to primarily EVM networks now, which Ethereum was the first one. The E in EVM stands for Ethereum Virtual Machine. Um, so like Pulse Chain's an EVM network. So you have this, so, so Jack, who was at the helm of Twitter when they were helping the United States government violate your rights to freedom of speech, by the government themselves, giving them lists of people to silence and deamplify and ban because they talked about COVID or Joe Biden's laptop or his son, Hunter Biden's laptop full of pictures of him smoking crack and getting down with hookers, you know, and by the way, the idea that Joe Biden's kid gets a bunch of jobs in Ukraine with no qualifications and a bunch of money from China and Ukraine, and then writes his dad checks and pays for dad's cell phone bill. Man, you're busted, bro. <laughs> Yo, in the, in, the, in the carceral state of America, where nearly anything's a crime and nearly anything gets you 20 years, Joe Biden, I got bad news for you, buddy. It ain't looking good for you, man. Why is your kid writing you checks? And why does he have jobs in countries that we're sending billions of dollars to? What's that? <laughs> like, what? Stop. Dude, dude, no, don't. Like, 
Oh, America, man. I left America, what, 2003? 20 years ago. I left America 20 years ago, and yet here I am spending my days doing legal research to try and make America a better place. Sucks for me, bro. Sucks for me. Left 20 years ago, didn't get any of that free helicopter money, didn't get any free money checks, didn't get any loans that I didn't pay back, any of that crap that everyone else in America apparently got. Um, yeah, but here I am still trying to make it a better place because my people, I care about my people. That's why I'm doing a Christmas video for you guys. And, uh, you know, that's why I, I give you so many things away for free. I care. Free book, t.me slash scivive. S-C-I-V-I-V-E. -I -I -E. Two free books there. Uh, free coins. Pulsechain.com. Uh, Hex.com. What else? There's so, there's so many things I like. L let me tell you how smart I am, okay? <laughs> you could have claimed Hex.com. You could have minted Hex for free during the first year. You could have minted it for free. Boy, that Richard. He's a smart guy. The Mt. Gox hacker, the Silk Road hacker, the Chinese government that took all the Bitcoin away from uh, the plus token Ponzi that caused the pump, like, I don't even remember what year it was. None of those guys can mint free hex because there was a timer on it. You could only count it for the first 365 days. Mt. Gox, sorry guys, you don't get any free hex. <laughs> So awesome. Um, and actually, the, the Gox addresses were just removed. So even if they had made it before the timer, they were just not allowed to anyway. What a good design. What a better design. Instead of getting your head dumped on by the government. The government took the Silk Road hacker's coins. He's going to dump them on you. The government took uh, the Bitfenix hacker's coins. He's going to dump them on you. The government took uh, FTX's coins. They're going to dump them on you. You guys love giving the government your coins to dump them on you, don't you? You love it. You just can't get enough of it. <laughs> but Richard Hart design stuff doesn't have this problem. Yay. Well done, Mr. Hart. Yeah. So I, I think I have a very high degree of certainty that you're going to see these constitutional arguments prior restraint, freedom of association, freedom of speech, um, Rule 210, safe harbor protections. Uh, there's a wide, you know, equal process, rather equal protection, due process, guys violating their rights, guys lying to the court. I think you're going to see these come up. I think you're going to see these come up in SEC cases. If you don't see them in amicus, you're going to see them in uh, motions to intervene. You're going to see these. You're going to see these arguments. They're going to be happening. And then the courts are going to have to decide. And here's the funny thing. Sometimes you get a judge and it's a good, honest judge. Understand stuff, right? So, for instance, in the Coinbase case, they got Judge Fiella. And Judge Fiella also got a class action lawsuit against Uniswap. And she rejected it and dismissed the case because she was like, no, you know, Uniswap isn't a securities exchange and the founders of Uniswap and the people that designed the software are not supposed to have, you know, you can't pretend that they're an exchange and they owe you some due diligence and all this crap. So she understands automated market makers. She understands Uniswap and that's the judge in the Coinbase case. So, I mean, that's awesome, right? Like she ruled correctly in a class action lawsuit against Coinbase. She's therefore, you know, maybe we'll rule correctly in the Coinbase case. Maybe they'll win on their motion to uh, motion for judgment on the pleadings, just similar to motion dismiss. Um, it, it, it depends on what judge you get and how much due diligence they want to put in. And there, there's a lot of cases out there, right? Like there, you've got the case against the tornado guys. You've got uh, the IRS. I guess that comment period's over, but you've got now the the OFAC treasury comment period regarding trying to make all mixers illegal, which is the dumbest thing ever. Like, you, hey guys, here's the fourth amendment. It says you have a right to privacy. Here's the United Nations, uh, you know, human rights thing that 
everyone that's like signed off on that we believe that, that these are the rights humans should have and privacy is one of them. Freedom of movement is one of them too. But then you go make all these laws that are the opposite of it. You can't say that people have a right to privacy and then do everything you can to violate their privacy. It's not consistent. It doesn't make sense. You're violating the constitution. Please stop. And they're just doing it all over the place. And people aren't fighting back. Like, <laughs> you can't have a functioning, human beings are not designed to operate well in non-private environments. That's why we wear clothes. That's why we close our blinds. That's why we lock our doors. That's why we don't share our toothbrushes. Like, human beings function well when they have privacy. They do not function well without it. And it just, it's crazy to me that these people, if you can call them that, keep trying to violate everybody's rights over and over and over and over and over again. It's enough. Like, please let us be free. Please. The, the founding fathers fought and died for our freedom. Many Americans have fought and died for our freedom. Can we please have our freedom? Pretty please. You guys should go get real jobs producing things that people want, goods and services people want. If you're just removing people's freedom all day, there's a chance you're not helping society. There's a chance you're hurting society. So unfortunate. All right. So you lawyers out there, you need to cover your first amendment, equal protection, free speech, freedom of contract. There's a whole lot of things that you're not using that you're going to wish you'd used when, if, if you have to go to appeal. And it would be nice to have the precedent set.